Hello everyone, what is up and welcome back to today's video. I am so excited to share with you my own version of Battle of the Brands. for my favorite pantry staples from both Walmart and Target. The reason I'm super excited for this video is because I think it really shows which stores inflation prices have gone up the most, which stores you can save the most at, and yes, one store actually did win. Again, this is just a price comparison video, and of course, all prices are regional to where you live. No matter where it is in the world, prices are different, and they usually are based on cost of living. So my cost of living might not be your cost of living. My prices might not be your prices, but this is just a fun video to compare Walmart versus Target and to really see who is cheaper. <laughs> Let's start with flour. Now flour, whether you purchase regular or gluten-free, was different prices at each store. And I will note, my husband actually just pointed this out, so uh, it kind of messes with the video a little bit, but the packaging on the flour I purchased today and one other item is different sizes per store. But quickly with the math, I think one store still kind of came slightly ahead. But regular flour at either store was very comparable. I will note that Target did have whole wheat flour in the Target brand, whereas Walmart does not. So if you wanna purchase whole wheat flour, your best bet is to find a Target that carries it. And a nice addition I will say for most of the items that I have with me today, Target was the better stocked store overall. Walmart shelves, because it's a bigger box store, I feel like it has more shoppers every single day, and some of the shelves were so bare. Like, I couldn't even get all the items that I personally wanted because Walmart didn't have a lot of them. So when we're talking about flour, the regular flour at Target was $1.56, and the flour at Walmart was $1.59. So really very close in prices, but if you add the Target Circle app, you're going to save an additional 5% right off the bat as soon as you check out. So keep that in mind as I'm giving you prices of comparisons throughout this video. When it comes to gluten-free flour, this is where the price comparison is better in Walmart's favor. It was $2.98 for a package, and the package is actually bigger coming from Walmart. It is a 22 ounce bag versus a 16 ounce bag over at Target. But $2.98 for gluten-free flour at Walmart. It was very hard to find. I had to search so hard to find the gluten-free section, which I think is actually very challenging. As someone who has been gluten-free since about the beginning of October, it's so much easier if all the items are right in the same spot. Tell me if I'm correct. I know it's not technically supposed to be that way, but even if they're in the general location, Finding a gluten-free section in Walmart is horrible. It is so hard to do because it's not always in the same spot in every single store. This one is actually in the Hispanic food section, whereas other times I've seen it in the snack food section and sometimes even in the baking section. So I guess for this one, it's kind of a tie. Target wins on one side, Walmart wins on the other, but for the prices I bought today, Target did win. I didn't purchase any oats because I personally didn't need them. Plus, 
I had a really hard time purchasing the prices that Walmart and Target both had because I get my gluten-free oats over at Winco Foods. I usually pay about $1.69 per pound in the bulk section, but last week they were actually on sale for 97 cents or 99 cents. So I picked up a whole bunch, I stocked up, so I didn't purchase any today because I didn't need them. But let's go over prices really quick for gluten-free and then of course for regular oats. So the gluten-free oats, were different sizes at both stores, but Target, the only gluten-free oat that they had was $5.99 per package. At Walmart, it was $3.12 per package. But the regular old-fashioned oats and quick oats, which quick oats are my personal favorite when we're talking oats, were $2.59 at Target and $2.58 at Walmart. Comment below and let me know if you're surprised right now by how close these prices actually are when they vary from store to store because it might get a little bit more shocking when we get into a few other products. Pumpkin is a personal staple now for us because my little chihuahua is becoming very difficult to feed. He won't eat dog food anymore. We've been trying really hard to just kind of create comfort care for him. He's going to be 18 years old in April and we found that he really likes canned pumpkin and rice. So I did pick up both of those things today because they're a huge staple in my kitchen right now and I wanted to share with you the prices for those. So over at Target, a can of pumpkin is 99 cents and over at Walmart, it's 97. But with that 5% on Target Circle, Target actually wins this one out. Let's talk about rice really quick. I did get the two pound bags of rice at each store because Target did not have the one pound rice bags. And for two pounds of rice at Target, it was $1.59 and $1.46 over at Walmart. Now, I was gonna compare brown rice as well, but Walmart didn't actually have any brown rice. Personally, I don't eat a lot of brown rice. It doesn't seem to sit well in my stomach. I am a white rice person, but I did note that they were about the same, about three to four cents different between the two, Walmart being just a little bit lower. Canned green beans are also a huge staple in our house. We both really like them because we grew up on them. That was a staple for both of our families, for my husband and I growing up. Plus it's another item that my dog actually really likes. If I cut them up really small, he eats them. So he has a really great dinner of rice, pumpkin, and green beans multiple times a day. But at Walmart, these green beans were 50 cents a can and at Target, they were 55. But with the Target circle, it's about even. Okay, here is another price comparison that I thought Target had beat Walmart out by, but unfortunately the sizing was different, which I didn't notice when we were going through the store. But gluten-free pasta, I actually prefer the brand from Target. I think the texture is better. I think the taste is better. And it took me so long to find the one at Walmart. Did you guys know that Walmart had a gluten-free pasta section? I had no idea. I'd never actually seen their brand. Usually I see a national brand. I can't think of the name of it right now, but Typically, I don't find anything in the Walmart brand when it comes to gluten-free pasta. The prices did vary when it came to gluten-free pasta. It ranged from $1.96 to $2.98, depending on what the pasta shape was. Over at Target, they were $1.69 no matter the shape, plus they had a lot of different types. If you wanted to go with red lentil pasta or yellow lentil pasta, plus they had a whole bunch of different brands, I was here for it. Like I said, I prefer Target gluten-free pasta over Walmarts. I've tried them both now, and that would be my preference. Another staple for us is tomatoes in a can. I like to make my own tomato sauce, so I both got tomato paste and diced tomatoes. Diced tomatoes at Target were $1.59 and only 96 cents over at Walmart. And then tomato paste was almost a complete tie at 49 cents at Target and 46 cents at Walmart. But then when you add the Target circle, again, Target kind of edges them out just by a hair. Okay, let's talk dry beans. I personally like dry beans better than canned beans, but I purchased both because canned beans are super convenient. Plus when I'm doing a dollar amount when it comes to extreme budget grocery shopping and meal ideas, the cans kind of, you can squeak into a lower budget, but dry beans are always the better price when it comes ounce to ounce. However, this might actually surprise you as to who won the dry bean battle between Target and Walmart. So dry beans, no matter what the type, were 99 cents over at Target. It didn't, it didn't matter if you bought lentils, what color lentils, chickpeas, pinto beans, kidney beans, black beans, they were 99 cents per package and that is for one complete pound. 
but over at Walmart, they were $1.28 just for black beans, and then every single bean was a different price. And to me, that's a little bit frustrating, like lentils were $1.28, and then pinto beans were 97 cents, and then kidney beans were $1.07. So it depended on what type of bean that you wanted to purchase, and they did not have chickpeas or garbanzo beans in the dried section. I've never actually seen them at Walmart, but that's my favorite bean to purchase because that's my favorite bean overall. And yeah, I couldn't find it. But Target won this one out in comparison, 97 cents to $1.28. That's a great price breaker and it's a wonderful deal to stock up on. Canned beans was also a surprise to me. So all of my Target beans were the same as long as they weren't organic. They were 55 cents a can, no matter the type of bean. If you wanted to get a chickpea, a kidney bean, a pinto bean, or a black bean, 55 cents. At Walmart, they were 72 cents a can. So again, a little bit of a difference. And this is where I noticed the biggest markup of inflation was between the beans and the rice. So I have purchased them multiple times for extreme budget grocery shopping videos here on my channel at Walmart and those things I noticed had gone up the most. Okay, now let's talk price comparisons. So Target's total was $11.98 before my 5% savings. With my 5% savings, it was $10.47. Walmart's total was $11.79. So technically, on paper today, Target did win. However, I am going to note that the size of the gluten-free pasta and the gluten-free flour was bigger from Walmart. So when I did the math, Target only won by about 16 cents. So really, price comparison was super, super close. The only thing I will say is I noticed the biggest inflation of prices from Walmart in comparison to Target. When we were talking about beans and pastas, I feel like, and even rice, I feel like those prices have gone up quicker at Walmart than Target has. Target has kind of kept their prices a little bit lower and has not inflated them as quickly as of right now. So that's my price comparison. I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Now let's jump in to the three wonderful recipes that I have to share with you using these pantry staples because I know many of you guys who view my videos have these staples on hand every single week. As always, I am so excited to bring you some recipes. I've been really trying hard to really tap into the quality of my videos by giving you a lot of information in one single video. So not only are you getting super awesome budget comparison for pantry items, you're also getting four recipes, not three. We're starting out by making a vegan cheese sauce. I like to say cheese with a Z. It is potatoes, carrots, and garlic with a little bit of the water that I'm cooking these root vegetables in. I, if I'm in a hurry, will cook these in my Instant Pot. I do prefer it over a stove top because I think it has more richness and more starch to it. If you wanna even make it even glossier and a little bit creamier, add about a teaspoon of cornstarch to it before you blend it up. You can also add a little bit of lemon juice if you have it on hand, it gives it just a little bit of tang. I will put the full recipe for this down in the description box below along with the seasonings that I added. I just shared this recipe over on Instagram. I've shared it many times here on my channel. I think I make it at least once every other week. I don't share it all the time, but it's something I do keep on hand in my freezer and then we pull out often to add to recipes. So you'll see that recipe here in a little bit that I'm using for this cheese sauce, but I have some other recipes we need to go over first. So I popped on Pinterest when I was coming back from the store to look for a few just kind of different snack items that we could use this week. We are so busy right now. If you've been following me for a while, you know we paid off our debt last year. We decided to build a home and everything is just kind of coming to a quick closing here at the end of the year, plus it's the holidays. So I made two batches of these pumpkin cookies and what I decided to do is make a batch for my husband and I as a snack for the week and also make a batch for my little Chihuahua Levi and he 
loves these cookies. He was super happy with them. What I did for him is I actually blended oats for him instead of using gluten-free flour. I have some just regular quick oats that I keep on hand that aren't gluten-free for him and for my husband. And then I didn't add sugar to his, but I did add peanut butter. So definitely keep that in mind when you make these cookies. They're phenomenal. They're a pumpkin pie cookie. And I realized I only added a half a cup of pumpkin and not a full, but no harm, no foul. Just start to mix it up real quick and realize it's a little too dry. But I will type the recipe for these cookies and leave them in the description box below. If you have small children or pets or husbands that really love pumpkin, or you would just want to sneak a little bit of pumpkin into their diet without them really knowing it's good for them, these cookies are a game changer. They're so good. It makes about 24 cookies and they're the perfect snack or even the perfect breakfast because I feel like they have a nice little amount of healthiness to them. If you don't want to use sugar, you could definitely use maple syrup, but the recipe is typed down in the description box below. Oh, these cookies were so good. Look how cute they are. It's a little kind of like fallish kind of little snack and it's perfection. Okay, so I have been playing around with a lot of gluten-free bread recipes. The one thing that I find difficult when I'm searching for recipes on Pinterest or Instagram is a lot of them are so many ingredients. And to me, being budget friendly is to minimize the amount of ingredients. For example, I personally don't want to go buy a whole bunch of ingredients for a loaf of bread and then not like the bread I made and then have all these ingredients on hand. So I'm really trying to test the waters, test different recipes, and I've made an Irish soda bread here on my channel before, but I did not add a fat source. The thing is, is a lot of people I know who follow my channel are oil free. They don't use a lot of fat sources. You don't have to use it, but I found with this recipe, it was 100 times better. So this is a very minimal ingredient recipe. It's gluten free. It is vegan. I'm using soy milk and about four tablespoons of melted butter. So when you do the kind of ratio of how much butter is in per slice. It's not really that much. You could even cut that down in half if you wanted to, but this recipe is so good. When you are working with Irish soda bread, I will say it feels very dry because there's no yeast to it. Please know that's totally normal. The outside is usually very dry as well, especially with gluten-free flour. Another thing I will note if you do make this bread is don't play with it a whole lot. It is kind of mealy, almost like kinetic sand. Whenever I make a gluten-free bread, I feel like that's the best way to explain it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's almost like a sand that feels wet and dry at the same time. Um, but don't play with it too much. Don't over knead it because it will get really rough and you want it to keep its moisture as much as possible. But this bread turned out so good. I've made many loaves of this in the last couple weeks and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Again, it will look really dry on the top, but once you cut into it, it's so moist and so chewy because that little bit of fat that's in it, it's awesome. Especially if you don't have any yeast on hand, you just have to throw in some soda. And of course, I have to share with you what I am using that cheese sauce for. So I decided to take some Rotel, some corn and black beans, a little bit of onion and some gluten-free spaghetti, throw it all together and have this really good, almost like taco pasta. It was so good. Now, if you've never had the potato slash carrot cheese sauce, you're probably thinking this is the weirdest thing. What is this girl making? Trust me. I posted earlier this week on Instagram, like I said, the recipe and so many people 100% agreed. It's just like this combination with the nutritional yeast and the starchiness of the potatoes and just a little bit of zing from the seasonings and it has a cheesy vibe to it. No, it's not 100% cheese. There were a couple people that said, congratulations, you made potato soup, but it does add so much flavor and just a really nice texture. Trust me, just try it once. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. You might need to try it a couple of times because <laughs> I think we all at first are kind of like, wait, what is this? But it's really good. And I feel like Rotel really amps it up. Same with a little bit of red onion. It's so delicious. I will also add for this pasta dish, leave about a quarter 
of a cup of pasta water just to kind of get the little bit of extra starch in your pot to make it really nice and creamy. But I hope you enjoy this recipe. I wanted to quickly say thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you really liked it and I'll see you next Thursday. I have a jam packed dinners recipe video coming for you guys, just like the one I put out last week, which I'll link right up here in the cards plus link down below for you. I have a handful or more. I'm, I'm hoping to put 10 recipes together, but we'll see. It has been an extremely busy season for me, which is why I'm cutting down to the one video a week, but I have so many good awesome, easy weeknight meals for you coming next Thursday. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.